Psychedelic Sundays. <laughs> um, you know, I think um, starting at the beginning, you know, I think, you know, for a lot of a lot of times, the, you know, the first time you take uh, mushrooms, the first time I actually took mushrooms is um, I got them from my friend from San Francisco and I was like scared to take them. So I, I just like didn't take them. Um, like we, we just bought them. We were going to do them. And then like I had them for a while and then like I was like, I had some time where like I was I had the house to myself, so I was just like, "Fuck it, I'm gonna do it." But then I did it. I had an eighth, and I didn't do the full eighth because I did it in a T. <laughs> and then, uh, and then so I did it in a T, which was which was pretty good. But the thing was, is like it's kind of funny because I I didn't really know what to expect. So like the whole time I was like, "Is it hitting me? Am I am I high yet?" <laughs> and I just I just remember like what like in my peripheral vision like I had this cone in my bed uh, in my mm. bedroom uh, like you know like a street cone uh, and then so like it was like on it was just like in my peripheral vision and then it looked like it just went down and went back up like like just like spontaneously and I'm just like oh shit I think it's kicking in <laughs> Nice. And, and then um uh, for some reason I was looking in the mirror and then um like it was weird because then like my hair was like turned into like horns and then I remember like looking at my mouth then like my mouth disappearing and then like look, like looking into the mirror and then I was like oh my mouth is gone like <laughs> thinking it and then I'm like oh shit I can't I can't talk like like I have no mouth <laughs> Anyways, it was just like weird stuff like that. But which is funny because I just read an article um, on my trip. Like I was just reading different articles. And one of them was um, for the ancient Maya. The, the headline was for the ancient Maya cracked mirrors were a path to the world beyond. And like they did like these elaborate interaction, interactive like um hieroglyphs like they were written backwards and they had like like things in them so like when you cross the threshold like you could see what the inscription is or something like that right and so like i guess they would also do this when they're on mushrooms <laughs> which is you know obvious <laughs> very interesting it might be a way to send a message across yeah right? so to speak because I think I think you know before we we get really deep into it, like there's a broad um, perspective of like the missing link or or something that makes a lot of this poetry sacred uh, narratives make sense is adding the psychedelic you know ingredient and that like I remember one time talking to my cousin. And um, it's funny, like, in different circles to have different conversations about, like, how much you you could, like, tell somebody, you know, not like it's a bad or a good thing, but so it could be heard, you know? Right. <laughs> and so we were talking about, like, ancient aliens, right? And so, like, this is, like, a step from, like, he's not really religious, but, like, he's like, oh, but, you know, we kind of had the conversation about, like, ancient aliens. Oh, it makes more sense, like, if it's a, a higher intelligence, then it's, like, this, like... Um, a visible guy in the sky, you know, like folk, folk, mm. folklore or fantasy, you know, uh, like science fiction seems more more real in like um, the imagination. But I think too because like all of this is connected within, like what we know about like data. Nothing gets like erased; it's always there. So like the the dream time or the every win like has like all the information in all its different possibilities already recorded within the whole system and it's just like expressing itself in different ways right so like thinking about 
that and I just remember in my head telling him oh but you know what makes even more sense is that it's not like physically like aliens it's like happening deep within your own brain you know like inner past outer truths like this this is this is not like a uh, hallucination seems like something um different but i remember liking how they framed it as true hallucination like it's like a hallucination that's tied to information that's non-local um hmm. and you're able to like decode it and um pick on these different strands of of what 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 is there because there's been a lot of uh human progress that's been um developed within dreams or and or um hallucinations and what was interesting too what i mentioned in in um the chat was um just bri really briefly um uh there was a translation of um some of the indigenous like back in the time talking about them using mushrooms and different regions had like different terms but there were one one of them was the little mushroom people and mm -hmm. basically they were asking it for like divide like advice or um like deviation like to predict the future and um according to that thing too it was pretty accurate like most of the stuff that like they got was like information that uh turned out to be true or and or like roundabout ways of you know what i mean like they one guy saw his death and and right. and then he ended up like dying you know fa fairly within the time frame mm. <laughs> uh one also too was like <laughs> supposed to go to war and went off to war another one like you know like most of the stuff was uh pretty accurate but anyways it's just interesting how and that's like the not the only way they or anybody uses them but that is like historically one way um to use it kind of like um to gain information you know mm -hmm. um from it uh, from communication with uh, a little per a little voice uh, within it you know um, a lot of the terms there are um uh, you know the little saints um mm -hmm. uh referring to like you know a, a mind that's communicating to you <laughs> Yeah, I think um, that's exactly what it is. I mean, um, the the one um, I was when I was putting together the uh, PDF, the one that kept I I just kept like, are we serious right now? Is this is this what really is going on? Is the one about uh, Maria Sabina and her uncle? And at first, I don't know how many times I've read this, but I didn't catch it until I was working on the PDF. Mm -hmm. But it says she was eight years old. Like, just imagine how crazy it would be in our modern society. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, an eight-year-old going out into the woods, getting a mushroom, mm -hmm. and then coming back with a fucking cure for some disease that's killing somebody. Like, that's yeah. insane. Like, yeah. That is insane. But I think, yeah. too, <laughs> how that only works is that that is, like, uh Well, I know. I, 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 yes. Right. Well, I mean, there is definitely something at work there. And I think it is, uh, you know, my whole my whole thing is to, to relate it back to, you know, something that's physical, more real. And yeah. If mycelium has this network throughout, you know, the ecosystem and it's it's literally like the, it running things. Yeah. It knows every it knows everything. Yeah. So, of course, if it's going to if it does communicate with you. If that's what we're talking about, then these things are going to be, yes, it's going to know these things. And, you know, if you have the right relationship with it, of course, it, it's going to give you that information that you're seeking. Like, I, 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 I don't understand how people, you know, that have done these things don't come to these conclusions. That's exactly yeah. what we're doing. <laughs> and then it, it's funny. It's so like what we were kind of mentioning before. It's so com like common sense, but also insane from our, right, cult right. Like our cultural perspective exactly of, of what we've grown up in um because too Every you know day. that's why i was like scared of it at first and i think this is part of what i want to bring out in in other episodes when i was barely mentioning about being uh cali sober where mm. where like i talk about like this yeah. kind of stuff to my cousins when i'm like drunk or whatever and, mm -hmm. they're, and they're like oh damn you're crazy but i'm thinking yeah homie you're doing meth you're crazy 
<laughs> right. And, and like, but it's it's kind of funny because um, in Fruit of the Gods, Terrence um, brings up this thing about like white caffeine is kind of like more accepted than like weed because it makes you productive. It, it gets it, right. it, it makes you like get through your day. It makes you you know do menial tasks and like grind them out relatively fast versus if you're stoned you're like just like why am i doing this i shouldn't be doing this <laughs> i'm be doing yeah. other things i'm gonna do other things that are more interesting <laughs> like, and but it's kind of funny because going back to like my family and um i was talking about like how they're wild and 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 i mean like i have that kind of like same thing too it's like kind of funny because i think too talking culturally i think people are seeking what you get out of a classic mushroom experience when they think about like you know going and doing something crazy or whatever but it's funny because it's it's so crazy that like you have to like face yourself in order to get like the good stuff yeah <laughs> and there's no way around it and that's why i don't that's why it's like people don't do it yes <laughs> that's, that's the fear um, yeah, I think that's what, uh, you know, uh, weed helped me with a lot more with because uh, it helped me, I guess, figure out what I needed to figure out prior to taking, mm-hmm. you know, some deep psychedelics. Mm-hmm. So when I'm at least so far with the, the trips that I've had, it hasn't been like, you know, any any um, necessarily, even though there has been, you know, stuff that I definitely need to work on and I know these things, mm-hmm. but it hasn't been like deep trauma that, yeah, you know, yeah. has been locked away for years. Like I, I pretty much know all my trauma and I've worked yeah. throughout, you know, worked it out throughout the years. Yeah. Um, and I think, again, marijuana has helped me with that oh, yeah. um, a lot. So, yeah, it definitely is one of those things where it is necessary part of the experience um but thankfully for me i'm not i don't necessarily need it um and i can i can i can you know seek beyond that and go straight into what you know yeah. what i'm trying to actually it's get true. done and is establish a communication without having to necessarily you know go through years and years and years of <laughs> mental blocks because of some past trauma yeah um, yeah but yeah no but it is beautiful that these things do that so, oh, yeah. you know, I'm, I don't want to knock anything like that because you know, that is a necessary uh, part of the experience. I think that, you know, people okay. that definitely need it can, can, you know, and I think use. that's definitely the culture that we live in, right? The, the value proposition of psilocybin, or whatever, that it, it actually, with in combined with psychology, you know, like, you know, psychotherapy or whatever, or some, some type of follow up therapy that it can help you, you know, form new habits, mm. you know, experience basically death and kind of be all right with it. <laughs> in the, in the right, right circumstances, right, yeah. like, oh, okay, like, oh, my my individual self is just a drop in the whole ocean of consciousness. Mm. Oh, okay, so there's, there's more things that you could tie yourself into, um, which I think is kind of interesting. There was another thing that I wanted to bring up when I was um, talking, and they and it was kind of funny because they were using this in a business way, but it says rituals rewire your, your brain, and like uh, so like they're talking about like businesses using like rituals to like mm. you know help, help yeah, help yeah. their whatever blah blah blah. But it's the same way too when we're talking about like set and setting when it, when having to mm-hmm. do with with any uh, psychedelic. And I think with any, with anything really, but attention, what your own, and what we were just briefly talking about before was like, you know, your own emotional baggage when coming to the trip. I think that's like the first thing that always has to kind of like right. be talked that's about important. and kind of like get through. But, you know, we're, 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 we want to dive into like, you know, the deeper ocean of, uh, of that as well. But I think, too, even, too, um, because Robert Anton Wilson, John C. Lilly, they created their own rituals or protocols uh, into um, experimenting and delving into um, these areas of 
mind or the mycelia network or consciousness or dream time um whatever you know term uh goes in there but i think too what what i want which i always kind of bring into the table which is kind of like what i mean by disembodied poetics i think like the way to understand all this there's there's um a certain type of dream logic which is similar to maybe logic which is also dao logic that that is also um the way to better understand a lot of this is with poetry where like in poetics it doesn't matter you know if you say dream time or consciousness or or mycelia network or whatever you say but it, it's like uh it sounds right and you don't you know <laughs> uh it, it's about like how it like hits you like i mean a lot of um i think too a lot of what what i've been trying to resurrect or, or dig up is is um what i'm referring to like the harmonics of a koken uh just briefly a koken for for all our um listeners to the new um uh, psychedelic Sundays, you'll get very familiar with him. He's the Mayan um, god of poetry, and uh, I had a dream about him one time, a long, long time ago. Uh, and I always wanted to be like, oh, that's kind of interesting. I should decode that. And then I have since done that. But I think the whole process of me doing that, and also I think what 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 a lot of things we will do, um, you know, in in the Discord and also via our blogs and the PDF is about like um, decoding or unlocking what I refer to hand words or like these words that like when the first poets who were communicating certain things about this were using like weird or um, tenyana kato or you know the little little mushroom people and when you find out what they meant by it it opens up a lot more and it's like uh you're like oh shit like could it be that simple <laughs> oh shit <laughs> it's been it's been so common that like we're the ones that have like our minds a little bit backwards and it's uh interesting to kind of like reorientate yourself to being like oh it's kind of like yeah um because there's some other um things that i have where it talks about um, this this uh, um, kind of tribe in the Amazon, and they use ayahuasca for them hunting. And then the the poet talks about how like because they're dealing with like visions, right? They already have the 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 mythical language to be able to talk about it fastly and uh, and like. So they all know what a jaguar means beyond just like seeing it in a vision, you know? That means mm. that like they all have their own like personal relationship to to different um you know, tryptamine geometry. <laughs> right. Because, because it actually expresses itself visually more so <laughs> and I think we I think the mushroom helps us like interpret it into our language. <laughs> but it's it's I think it's more of a visual uh uh you know hyperbolic geometry that communicates <laughs> to you. Uh, yeah. Right. Anyways. But yeah, those are, those, <laughs> those are just some thoughts I was having. <laughs> Heard. But um going back to actually your uh, first story and I found it kind of interesting but I uh, briefly do you want to talk about it like you said you first took mushrooms and then you went on mines and then you you're like oh let me talk to this guy <laughs> oh my first trip no um it was I think it was after we had met mm. um it was it was because mines was the summer of 15 yeah and then it was that following like april oh okay 2016 i believe yeah because it was around my birthday <clears throat> that year nice. so but it was about the same time 
Um, so but yeah, no, I, I had, I, I mean, I had your traditional uh, three and a half, you know, yeah. standard, yeah. nothing crazy. It was me and my buddies. We were hanging out, um, just laughed, uh, you know, watched the walls do their thing. <laughs> Uh, nothing really out of the ordinary. I felt like um, my mind was a supercomputer. I remember right, that, right. like you know, I just felt sharp and alert. Oh yeah. And and thinking like, why can't this be life? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, so uh, yeah, it was nothing, nothing too crazy, but it was definitely, uh, definitely a good experience. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. And you know, bro- broadly too, another another term, and maybe. You know, this will, this is what we get into future um, PDF files. Is that you know what I what I refer to as mescaline city blues, is mm-hmm. like is like that. It was like like missing, be not like missing, of uh, like you know being high or whatever, but missing like being connected to like that information or like being there in that other like weird little place, mm. and, and then like. And then I think too, you know, for a long time too, uh, you you kind of mentioned it that like you drank like later and it was like, kind of like weird or whatever. It's like uh, you're trying to like still like that's what I'm that's what I kind of mean by like there's like a a blues of like missing like where you were saying like oh why can't this like be all the time? <laughs> right. <laughs> this. <laughs> No, that's that's it. Uh, every time I come down, uh, while you're there, it feels like eternity, mm-hmm. but you're only there for a few minutes. Like it's not you're not there that long. Yeah. Um, and then you know, as you're coming down, like for at least my first seven gram trip, I thought I was sober so many times throughout the evening. Uh-huh. It's just that I was on a different level of come down. Yeah. And I was like, oh damn. I was like, I'm I'm not as high as I was previously but I feel like I'm sober now. And then it's like, you start coming down again. It's like, oh no, I was definitely not sober. Yeah. <laughs> but and then when you finally do come down, you're like, how the fuck is this one illegal and not just part of our everyday experience? Like, why is this being kept from us? Like, yeah. yeah. There's so many questions, but yeah, the, the masculine city blues, like you, you just, the, 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 um, what is it? The deja vu, the, the feelings that, mm-hmm. you, you know, been there before even though you you know that's your first time doing the shit like what yeah. the hell is going on like <laughs> why do i feel like i've been here yeah like all of that yeah and i think too um that's where because i i did from um being a dharma bum I, I had like these different um, mantras and meditations that I that I were borrowing from Jack Kerouac, um, and it's mainly not not necessarily psychedelics, but in um, in night terrors, I would use them as like everything's alright forever and ever, um, mm. but like I think. This is this is the funny thing about like um, religious texts or sacred narratives, like it's almost as simple as that, like you ask and you shall receive, but you have to like really ask, and like at least temporarily believe it totally in the moment. <laughs> but there's what? there's like a attunement too <gasps> to like what it, that's why it's like a deja vu. It's like mm. it's. It's um I remember like reading this thing, you know, um commonly misunderstood about like um Aleister Crowley's um do will that wilt or whatever to whatever. But it it means to like the the actual creative power, like that's what I mean by like cosmic love is absolutely ruthless. It teaches its lessons whether you, you re- realize it or not. Like like there's a mm. there's a whole other like uh stream and course that consciousness like runs on <laughs> and it, it isn't it doesn't uh bother with our our petty you know um things <laughs> and it's better to like surf those those waves and get you know that beyond you know your local stuff and and um i just think it's it's all interesting um things um to think about <laughs> indeed 
but yeah so um i guess you want to talk about um your your experience recently yeah the recent one yeah yeah that was uh it wasn't too bad so um it was wednesday the 24th Mm -hmm. um april 24th 2024 Mm -hmm. um so um it was actually uh my first harvest of albino penis envy okay and I never did weigh them, and I barely dried them. So okay. they were – I would say they were probably like 80% dried. Okay. They're still a little bit damp, um, but I don't think that I, I – you don't really <clears throat> did anything. The only thing is I just like, – I never weighed them, so I have no idea exactly how much it was. It was definitely a good amount. If I had to guess, 10 grams. <laughs> I'm not I'm not 100% sure. Um, so uh, I got uh, to the springs on Monday, and I uh, – a vacation for a week off of work cool and part of the plan was to you know do this trip <clears throat> so i i seeped the uh, the uh the mushrooms in cold water because apparently that's the best way to do it um i'm still still uh experimenting with the best way i think honestly just eating them <laughs> is literally <laughs> the best way but it's so nasty. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, that's what, oh, what me God. and my 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 friend Rosie we do uh, when we do them um, is now grind them up and then like drink orange juice. But I was listening yeah. to this thing about um, Paul uh, Stemets, Stemets mm. or whatever Stemets. 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 Um, he was talking about like doing a cold brew like what you're talking about but he put like ice and then he put it in like the refrigerator and have it like slowly seep and then there's like this like blue like like liquid um that was interesting (laughs) yes that's that's what i got okay yeah and so it's still the the liquid taste is funky right uh oh i mean that that the that wasn't to take any of the flavor away no that's yes it's still gonna taste yeah exactly like mushroom water <laughs> yeah but uh it's just it's just very dark blue i mean i i let it sit for two days uh-huh in uh, on ice you know in a cup. okay okay yeah and uh i i don't know if seeping it longer that long actually does any difference yeah um again i eating them's got to be if you want 100 percent of the psilocybin you got to eat it yeah there's yeah, no yeah, there's yeah, no yeah. other way because i still feel like um even though i've i've had again i've I've done them several ways i've had the lemon tech the lemon tech is probably the best way to do the tea uh-huh. um yeah. this is because that i've i've definitely definitely felt the lemon tech <laughs> um but as far as this one went it was just Cold water, seep it for two days. The liquid was literally, you couldn't seep through a fucking liquid. Okay. It was daunting. It took <laughs> me two days to actually try it. Like the fear. Um, but after I, I drank it, I actually did it with the chocolate milk. Um, okay. So I didn't mix it because I was afraid oh, yeah. <laughs> to ruin chocolate milk no. for myself for life. <laughs> like every time so you I was drink like, it, you're going to be so shit. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Exactly. Like, yeah. no, I'm good. Um, but I did. So basically, I just took a swig of chocolate milk to coat the milk in my mouth. Mm-hmm. And then I took a big old giant mouthful of the mushroom, shot it down real quick, and then took another shot of chocolate milk, which wasn't too bad. Like, it was still nasty, but it wasn't that bad at all. Recommend if anybody um and then i waited 45 minutes until the big yawn kind of kicked in (laughs) now the entire i guess agenda in my uh my set yeah my intentions setting my intentions yeah uh for this and pretty much all going forward trips is to establish communication with the mycelial entity Um, that you know is known by countless names um and uh to understand what it is what is our relationship to it and what is exactly going on when we are you know on psychedelics probably all answers that you're not going to get 
but hell it's worth a try um but you know and that's where the science comes in right so that's why we all we do this with science backed uh, information we're just putting personal experience on top of it right yeah i i think there's there's like two two ways of like um because it, it's it's a symbiotic relationship because like there's a lot of times where i got something and it, this is where there's like deja vu or it feels like a dream and you're like why why is like that one weird thing like stuck in my head and mm. then like later you're like oh shit it's like oh this or that right like even even um early on before i started reading different things about uh, mushrooms and the history and more about about um what's going on um i would jokingly say with my friends like everybody like oh the taste is horrible i'm like oh i kind of like it it's just like a fun <laughs> it's like a funkier um you, um host like i was like mm. an ultra server and we used to like eat the the, the eucharist before it got like right. blessed and it was just like you know it tastes like a cracker and then i'm like oh shit that's like like that's the real way to do it <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the real way to do it <laughs> yeah you mean uh the real way to do it is just pick it and eat it freshly out the ground like, no well, the real way to <laughs> the real way no to, yeah no i know i know i'm just <laughs> <laughs> i'm just like oh we're talking about taste here i don't know that's probably got to be horrendous <laughs> but anyway so uh 45 minutes go by the yawn kicks in now to me, I, I don't know if this is in the psychedelic community, but it was when I first started doing uh, psychedelics, uh, my friend said, we got to wait for the yawn. Mm -hmm. So that's always been my indication is after 45 minutes, the big yawn. Um, so I don't know how well known that is, unless I can get the power of it. But that's what uh, is, you know, I'm seeing is my indication that it's about to start, um, yeah. which usually it does. Well, minute br mark. briefly, I think I told you in chat as like I, I get like clammy hands. And right, it, so I think it, it's it's different, right? Yeah, so, I but, think I you think know, you trigger. It might be a mental thing at this yeah, point. Yeah, what, whatever <laughs> is like your first experience, and then like that yeah, gets, that gets triggered <laughs> to to like you're like oh I, right. I, I felt uh, this before yeah. because yeah, so yeah, <laughs> so that's 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 my indication that. Um, and also, again, uh, that, you know, the entity is present, you know, you know, cause I yawn, I don't know, again, if it's just me, but I uh -huh. yawn throughout the experience, um, along with, you know, your eyes getting teared up laughing. There's a, there's yeah. a bunch of different indicators in my opinion that, you know, you're not alone uh -huh. in the experience and it's more than just, you know, patterns and uh, otherworldly images that you're seeing. Yeah. Um, but anyways, so, uh, at this time I was sitting, um, it's midnight. I was sitting. So, yeah. So I, I took him at midnight. Forty-five minutes go by. Um, I'm sitting at the campfire watching the full moon rise. Um, and at this point, um, I give it another fifteen minutes or so just to make sure I'm not, you know, full blown over the moon. Mm -hmm. When I can actually, you know, uh, have some presence of self. And everything's, you know, it's mild. The, the trip's coming on mild. It's not heavy. So I knew I was gonna be fine. I wasn't gonna be running around <laughs> naked in the woods. <laughs> so uh, I just laid down in my tent and closed my eyes and proceeded to try to have the conversation. Um, and I began off by asking, well, at first off, I took a play out of Ter McK Terrence McKenna's playbook and I greet, um, you know, the entity and, you know, just say welcome, you know, hello. And that's, you know, when, in my opinion, it appears, which mm -hmm. is usually um, an all-seeing eye-esque figure, and that comes in all shapes and sizes, and there's usually one, but there's usually multiple eyes. Mm -hmm. um, so to me, that indicates there's an entity there. You know, there's something with us, and it's more than just geometric patterns. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, so I then began to uh, ask it what its name was. And I got the typical response <clears throat> um, in the form of what 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 uh it seems like an old radio station being tuned in, mm -hmm. right? Like you know the um 
the Bumblebee Transformer from Michael Bay's Transformer movies. Yeah. Yeah. How he talked in the movies there. It was very similar. Yeah, like, it was, you know, the, the radio, it's tuning into different stations to get the word that it's looking for, and it's piecing that together to make the sentence. Yeah, yeah. But it's, but it's yeah, but it's, you know, but it's my inner, my inner thoughts that it's being pieced together in the staticky uh, reply. And again, the, the typical reply that I got back was uh, that it did not have a name. I was like, well, I know that, but you got to have a name. Like, you, you need to be called something. We can't just refer to you as entity, right? Like, mm -hmm. there has to, we have to establish, you know, um, I, I, I want to say like a, a personality, a personification. I don't know what the, what the term is, but there, you know, you have to establish like something. Yeah. There, right. And giving it a name, I think, you know, is that probably that, that, that line. Um, so I just asked it what it would like to be called. And the response I got was friend. Um, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, you know, like that for a name, but I'm not going to argue with it. So mm -hmm. yes, I'm going to, you know, friend is what a friend is, what you're going to be called from here on out as far as I'm concerned until you tell me otherwise. But having said that, from previous trips, mm -hmm. I had gotten the feeling that we're dealing with a child. At least I am specifically because I grew them myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and we discussed this that the you know the wild ones would you know would be older, they would be wiser, they would have more experience in the ecosystem. They would know things mm -hmm. um, on a more personal level, whereas even though they might be connected, you know, with their uh, it's it's so it's so hard to de uh, to uh, to define. But I like how Terrence defined it with the hyperlight communication memory. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, even though they're connected there, a child wouldn't necessarily know how to access it properly, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Like, it's like putting an infant in front of a computer. Eventually, it's going to be better than you at it. But in the beginning, it's just going to be smashing keys, and it's going to, it might open up a couple of pages and do some things. And, yeah. But you know what I mean? But at, for the most part, it's just going to be chaos. Yeah. Um, and that's how I felt trying to communicate in one of my last trips with um, what appeared to me to be the trickster or jester archetype okay. yeah. entity um and and that that trip it was um this is going back to um you know why i think um personally it's probably best to make sure you don't have any personal baggage yeah um as the this particular entity the one that we call the jester or the trickster um it's like it's straight chaos and what it appeared to me to be doing was going through a like what looked like a library pulling out books looking at them and then just tossing them aside mm -hmm. and in the moment i told it to stop that because those were my memories and it can't be treated my memories like that oh, yeah, yeah. that was the impression that i got at the moment like it was going through my memory banks pulling out memories you know and then just throwing them around like it was I don't know if it was searching or if it was just you know checking it out right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so oh that's what I got from that experience that this thing's a child right this thing's not listening to me it could care less what I say yeah, it wants yeah. to do it wants to do whatever it wants to do so I'm expressing all of these things to during this current trip to friend and as I'm you know basically going through the same rap it says in a reply I am correct. You are correct. Um, so we can discuss that, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> very interesting um, idea. Um, now there was way more to this trip. Um, some some little personal things that I went through. Um, but that was the gist of like what this you know I want to discuss. The rest of it is you know I was scared at a skunk <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> because I thought it was a raccoon. You know, you can read that in the PDF, <laughs> right? But uh, no, the, uh, definitely the the, um, the personality, individual, childlike, um, you know, newborn for, you know, the the new newest, and then then also, you know, 
what should we call this thing in the end? You know, what what are we gonna, gonna name it? What are we gonna name our pup? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I I think you know just the ideas that 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 come into my head is like, oh, we gotta train it. <laughs> oh, you know, you know, no, 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 no. I swear to God, that was the very first thing I thought of. And you know what the first thing I thought to train it was? I, you will never guess. What? But I want you to. I want you to try. We've already discussed it. <laughs> oh. Uh... Please, if you if you can do anything, you're omnipresent, <laughs> omnipotent. You're just all powerful being, entity, and all of these things. And I believe, please, can we alter the taste? That's all I'm asking. I know. That's, that's literally all I'm asking. <laughs> Let's alter the taste. Make it a little better. I don't care what else you do. You could design subways. You could become bricks for a house. I don't care. Nah, Just alter the taste. You know. <laughs> well, chef's kiss. That's it. <laughs> that shit's funny. Because uh, I, I told you um, my biggest fear of doing uh, mescaline again is having to drink the tea. <laughs> that bitter slug of a tea. That I have yeah, that's to what... Uh, <laughs> Know about ayahuasca yeah, yeah that's what i, I hear about to, ayahuasca too. but <laughs> when it's a whole process <laughs> yeah. and and i don't think it's as bad as ayahuasca but like if you're not used to it because the right, first yeah. couple of times you throw up you purge you like you're like, oh. mm, yeah uh, and and that's another thing for this trip uh going into or at least setting uh you know my 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 intention getting my setting right was trying to get over the idea that the nausea and the throwing up was mm. bad. Yeah. Because um, I, I was I was holding on to that because I, I just don't like puking. It's just it's yeah. a personal thing. I, just, I can't stand throwing up. <laughs> um, so the fact that that is a part of it, I'm like, nope, I'm fighting that all the way. <laughs> um, but this time I was just like, if it comes, it comes. And, and the anxiety... For that particular, you know, part of it was not there, at least as heavy as it usually is. Okay. Um, yeah. I think at least, you know, again, getting rid of personal baggage yeah. is, you know, is, is definitely key to having a great experience, experience and yeah. having that, that, you know, that, that good time or whatever your intentions are. Yeah, totally. I think to, you know, um, having, um, Cause I, th I think a lot of my own playing around with like, I did it in Toltec dreaming where I was like, okay, is this my mind or is this something else? <laughs> and I'm like poking at it. Like, are you really, no, you're just part of my mind. Aren't you? <laughs> oh no. Ah! <laughs> and, um, it's, it's interesting because I think part of the the real this is what i i mean by um dream time logic and maybe logic is that it's like both it's both like part of you in this greater grander whole but it's not really part of you <laughs> and that's where the non-local information like comes in and like um having to parse out too what is like what is you interpreting it as your own like bias and your own filter. Mm. I think this is a lot what um Robert Anton Wilson really deals with. Right. Um and and I think too of uh, John C. Lilly. And I, I think um I put it in one of these weird um I think it was the MetaMind Alf um video clip I made. But um our our particular spores of, of minds that we're gonna put in to this brew is Terrence McKenna Robert Anton Wilson and John C. Lilly. And I think, you know, moving forward too, you know, there'll be other people, but I think that's um, like, we go into what's the DNA of Satori D. Uh, those, it will begin with those um, three minds and um, those three works. And I think what, what, what is also important, um, which is, you know, whatever, uh, uh, too, about, like, the sacred narratives and, and things like that, I think it's it's for, like, these inspiration to create these um, names and these, like, even our own training with our own 
um, poetics of our own mind. Um, how how well can we um, be able to like um, communicate uh, the this the these things? I think too when we talk about what what is like the real advantage of um, the mycelial mind. Um, because you know, tense kind of mentions it, and the, the the first things about like visual acuity and even the auditory acuity, and then um, Paul um, Paul talks about like also to the um, characteristics of like taking mushrooms about like being at the empathetic and also to you know um, kind of these are like leadership things, and what I've what I think we we when we dig around in the history, and I think what's interesting about resurrecting what the Mesoamerican culture is, because that's like kind of as close as what, say before this break between, you know, uh, a culture that had like psychedelics entwined with it versus a culture that's disconnected from it, right? And then mm -hmm. then has material or political things running the the circuitry of um religion versus the mycelial working the, the circuitry of uh how people are organized um mm. because there there was this one interesting thing about um this uh her name's camilla thompson and she's um translating the shupawalis which are um written in Nawal, and these are like the the indigenous writing like uh, basic around conquest trying to keep uh, what the elders were saying and they wrote it between each other and um part part of that is she was saying in in when we talk about just historically the development they were like these events um, uh you know f farming cultures which is very similar to like the sumerian like culture <laughs> you know like that high uh and like egyptian culture or whatever too uh where where the advanced farming to like create these you know bigger structures and like you know um very roundabout with the natural cycles and this and that but it's interesting because you know throughout human history the, and i think this happens within the old mesoamerican uh, history there was one thing about this article in the incas and it says like the older times they would um negotiate taking mushrooms with each other or doing some type of ritual with hallucinogens later it doesn't become that it becomes with drinking and that's like kind of like more of the degradation of the of the society and like you know there's different uh developments too within the maya and um when that happens as well and i'm I'm wondering if that happens with like you know the environment changing and maybe it's harder to get mm. the mushrooms and then like you know they get um further and further away from you know yeah i'm sure it did parallels just like it did you know throughout the history. rest of the world yeah yeah throughout history because uh it seems to be uh i think terrence uh s described it as you know, uh, as the temperature started changing, <laughs> they became, I guess, sparser and sparser in certain regions. Uh -huh. And then, you know, uh, an, an interesting fact that might be um, a side note here, <laughs> yeah. um, specifically for the Amanitas, um, they may actually uh, only sprout every seven years. Oh, okay. So it could be it could be a cyclical thing on the mycelium producing mushrooms themselves, right? That we we haven't even uh, thought of that. Yeah. But this is this is brand new information now that we're you know they're studying mushrooms a lot more nowadays. That you know um, this is not science fact yet. This is still what this is. This could be a possibility. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, that might just be the case. They might have a. a a yearly cycle um for one just uh specifically for the amanitas i i know i found a bunch of them last year around this time um not muscaria but different uh amanitas yeah. um and i haven't seen any this year so i'm thinking maybe the he maybe the guy uh from uh is it uh 
is one of the main mushroom uh, guys on YouTube. I forget his name exactly. Oh, okay. Um, but he he uh, mentioned it offhandedly in one of his YouTube videos that he had a hunch that it was on a seven year the uh, specifically Amanita muscarias were on a seven year cycle, and he had last seen them in his area seven years ago, and I think it was last year they popped up. And he was like, I don't know, but it seems right to me. So it could be something also like that, not just the temperature changing, not just cultural, but, you know, the mycelials, natural habits that, you know, also play a role in, you know, the culture changing, you know, maybe yeah. the elder, maybe one of the elders die before his time, so to speak, right? A crazy natural accident, yeah. you know, another tribe comes in and they slaughter the, you know, leave only women and children, right? And they don't know the information. All they know are the stories, yeah. right? Um, so because these mushrooms are probably on a cyclical cycle, they yeah, they might know initially, but they don't know, quote unquote, the secrets. They wouldn't yeah. know that cycle, right? That's something the elders would have kept to themselves and trained for the, you know, the shamans. And that would have been their, their, their you know, secular knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. um, but the people would have known, you know, the sacrament, well, you know oh, it's a mushroom. You know, because right, I was because I was watching uh, one of those uh, one of these videos before we were talking, and we we're talking about the Mayan um, stone mushroom figures, right? Like uh -huh. they, you know, kind of going what you what you were saying. So like, if you know they they're sporadic and they there's a but you know they're gonna come later, and it's like marking it. But it's also tied, you know, with, I, I, we don't, I don't want to truncate it to just it being like, oh, you know, here I'm going to mark where a mushroom's going to come. But I'm sure, you know, tying They also it, migrate. Yeah. And having these things. Because also, too, I think uh, when I was talking about um, digging into more of like how they, how they were thinking about using the mushrooms and how they use them. And one of them, too, is saying like, uh, you know, how they have this, all these stone different like... Um, mushroom art right <laughs> but uh but some of them are um mocojetes you know a grinder and um so they would they would grind them grind up the dried mushrooms as well um right. honey is another thing that they would like preserve it in and all these things that are like tied together um even it's even funny because like the little bee shaman figure that i like to use like maybe mm -hmm. you know like embedded within it is also like how you preserving and keep and take care of it <laughs> you know <laughs> like, oh yeah, yeah yeah i mean that that's exactly i mean look at it i'm look, i'm staring at it right now yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's that's exact if you interpret it in a certain lens that's exactly what we're talking about we're talking about uh a, a humanoid that has mushrooms sprouting out of all over its body that yeah. sounds like um, you know, a symbiotic relationship. You got two species together, right? Yeah. And then the the V could symbolize many things, but I think it is the connection to honey. I think we're right to assume that um, because honey was well known, not just, you know, in Mesoamerica, but around the world as a natural preservative. Yeah. Um, and so many cultures, you know, used honey to preserve specifically mushrooms and other yeah um but yeah it that paul, that, that paul, to me right there yeah, is, paul mentioned is <laughs> that there was like a law like uh, you know um in like the medieval times or whatever to uh, ban mushrooms specifically in honey that they use uh, yep, to, to yep. brew and in beer in beer yeah, yeah in yeah. general yep yeah, yeah because uh honey was uh, and when i was talking too about the switch of how they ritualized um basically settling um tribal beef w before it was the the brew that had the the psychedelic honey and then mm -hmm. later they don't they don't use it anymore and then, then they're just drinking but i i think too like if you even think about it because i know in my own experiences without like having all of this um you know research knowledge about it was mm -hmm. that like i was literally inside my friend's head <laughs> you know what i mean there's, oh, yeah. there's no doubt about it so it's like you know there's like you, you can't lie <laughs> like if you're you know what i mean if you're vibing 
<laughs> and you're like solidifying yeah. that that bond versus if you just get drunk yeah in the moment you're like oh we're best friends and then later you're like oh i gotta fucking well, screw that person <laughs> i think if we if we get down to you know the more physics of it i, I guess that mm-hmm. if because you both were you both were tripping right mm-hmm, mm-hmm. on troops yeah okay so if we had this uh, symbiotic relationship with this mycelium that works off of a quantum entanglement of the chemicals psilocin mm-hmm. um, in our brain, then it would make perfect sense. And, and this, this chemical being a vehicle for um, a communication, right? Like Wi-Fi. Yeah. It's, it's essentially connecting devices. Um, then it makes perfect sense that any device that was currently connected to that network could receive communications yeah. from each other, meaning two people taking psilocybin are now on the network of the mycelial, establishing communication with it and also each other. And we're talking telepathic communication, not yeah. just you know verbally speaking, but you know you, were, you said you were quite literally inside her mind, hearing yeah. her thoughts. Yeah. Right. Yes. So we just need the science to back that up, basically. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. and I, I think that's, I think that what I just described is as real as it gets, and it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily need to be any more um, woo wooier than that. Like, mm-hmm. if the science can, if we can find the science, which uh, Honestly, I'm confident because of every, you know, every science that they've been doing, every experiment that they've been doing with this stuff. Yeah. Leads, leads, leads to, to me, what seems to be this final conclusion. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's, it's just, it's, you know, it's a waiting game. We got to be patient. Well, I think to going back, um, to what you're talking about the radio station, um, mm. in, um, the visible landscape and, uh, true hallucinations, they, they, uh, Terrence and Dennis talk about vegetable television. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, when I talk about my Moses moment, when I commune with a bush, and then later on, like, I don't even know, five five years later, I, I like, oh my God, the sound of um, microtubules and the sound of consciousness is the same sound that I was like in, in tuning. Because like, that's how I got like to commun- to commune with the bush. Is like mm-hmm. it was like this like weird humming sound that I had to like really really focus on, and blah, 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 and then like it became everything, and I became it. <laughs> and then I was really pissed when my friend like knocked me out of it. I was like, damn it! I was I was just communing <laughs> with with it. I was I established contact, established right. contact, and you messed me up. <laughs> oh, but it, it and later. Um, it talks about residents and and this is you know um i was reading this book um called um uh high weirdness and he goes over terence mckenna um robert anton wilson and philip k dick but he's talking about uh terence mckenna and what you know the the experiment when they take the mushrooms and then and then they yeah. Sure. They want they want to um, have the philosopher's stone, right? And yeah. um, basically, what they were talking about is residents and like you know the real science about like residents is like if string instruments are in tune with each other, then you you play you pluck a string and then the other one is able mm-hmm. uh, if it's in tune can resonate with with the vibration and play, you know, as well in in. Uh, um, synchronicity you know in the harmonics um i I think too when you're talking about what what is it doing it's uh helping us tune our consciousness to be able to to get like that you know it's a it's a deep that's uh it's a deep um level of knowledge a deep level like you know it's not like something other it's it's something that's like more um core to reality than we realize Mm. right 
Yeah, that's what that's you know that's always been my um, my whole thing is to try to you know break break it down to more physical reality and yeah for the longest time you know there's been something that was missing yeah always been <clears throat> you know well we can't necessarily explain it just yet um right up until i revisited you know terence mckenna's idea of a symbiotic relationship that i think is the key to it all um and then once you once you establish exactly well what is mycelium once you realize what exactly that thing is, it makes complete sense, you know, what what we're capable of if we do have this symbiotic relationship. Oh yeah. And that doesn't mean we're 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 superhumans that we're gonna be able to, you know, fly or teleport or do mm -hmm. any crazy, crazy nonsense like that. No, no. It means one, we are definitely not alone. We've never been alone. Yeah. That's that's plain plain plainly obvious um to anybody that just walks outside and sees nature, right? Yeah. Um, but two, that we've been in communication as a species as a whole with another sentient being other than a human. Like that has occurred and it yeah. can occur. Is is ongoing occurrence. And um it, and that yeah. Yeah, but that communication is something that we have never had an analogy for that we we couldn't we couldn't describe until you know we got the internet and it's the only the it's the closest analogy as to what the communication is doing between us and this other species is that it's showing us the internet of its own of of of, of, of its lifetimes you know what i'm yeah. saying of everything it's ever experienced right and it's not necessarily anything more than that, I think. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know, um, it's, it's kind of interesting too, because I think this is like, um, the, the human, you know, the, the real human story is is like this um tension between um you know the the because i remember what, how i framed it in my head is like oh i read a book that it was called uh, like i think it was just called gaia or whatever and in the whole book it was like um what was his name Lovelace? No. I forgot. Uh, it'll come to me later. But anyways, the, the guy on Hypothesis and about uh -huh. how, like, you know, the Earth is a is a network system that is intelligent. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's giving all the science behind it and, like, you know, the the rainforest is, like, its lungs and he, he has all this these whole yep. systems that created it to its own entity. And I was like, you know, that's... I, I love that book. But it wasn't until I had my my mushroom experience on this private beach in Santa Cruz and like feeling the earth like breathe having the felt experience of it it's like a whole different way of like engaging with like the the actual like knowledge of like what's going on um really going on and it, and it, you know it doesn't it doesn't have to be any more like um you know this gloss of like uh religion or spirituality to it i i don't like using the the term like god i remember one time using the term consciousness like a lot of times like how people use god and this one guy mm. that was very religious was like you know like downloading my stuff and then i'm like oh why why are you doing that and we had like this whole conversation and uh i was just like you're just mad because I'm not using God and I'm using the term consciousness in the place of God. <laughs> Just like, oh, God. <laughs> um, oh, God. <laughs> but, but I have my own bias on the other way. Um, right. Because when I, when I hear other people use God more poetically, I'm just like, oh, why are you using God? <laughs> but uh, that's my own stuff to get over. Uh, but, <laughs> but it is too, because like, there's funny because like, I have had, you know, direct experience with 
lack of a better word, higher intelligence, right? <laughs> like direct, like weird direct experiences with mushrooms or in dreaming and uh, mescaline and other other things. Um, and but you know when when someone uses like religious terms, you know they're talking about like those things that I experienced, but like I'm just like you haven't like experienced it. And I haven't huh. experienced it, and I wouldn't use it that way. You're using it because they're also the tricksters, and they're also not to be taken very seriously. <laughs> no. And if, you, if if you had experienced it, you wouldn't be being like this. <laughs> I remember one time I had this crazy conversation with Dream Eater, and I was just like going off about how like people were. This was like before or during the great meme war before. You know, when like that Pepe and like before Donald Trump became president. And it was just like a what? very weird time on the internet. And I, I yes. and I was talking to Dream Eater and I was talking about like I go, okay, for lack of a better word, and I always say this, like I always put like caveats, because like I'm gonna say like crazy things and I don't totally all uh totally believe it, but in order to tell you the story, like I have to like say, you know, give it names, right? right? I was like, for lack of a better word, I went to Lizardland and I was in Lizardland. <laughs> And I met this Jabba the Hutt, uh, Toad Face person, and he scared the shit out of me. And I start telling Dream Eater about this, and uh, and then I, I go into that thing I was saying. It's like, and if all these little dipshits on the internet that are doing keck and fucking Pepe, like actually met the fucker, this chaos god, they wouldn't be fucking around with this shit. <laughs> like I pissed my dream body, you know. I just kept on going on, and then. Cause like I I, <laughs> I go out and I tell him as the toad face uh uh job of the hut guy and he's like oh you met Kek like like he's he was like oh I met <laughs> there like all matter factly and I just start laughing because I was like you're totally right but it's funny because we're able to talk about it because we had like enough experiences to where it's not we're not talking like we're we're in normal senses we're using abstract language. But it's to mm -hmm. point to something that we both experience. It's not like, you know, just like some daydream in my head. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so, like, we're trying to communicate, you know, this, these different things. And, uh, and then it was just funny because, you know, what you're talking to about, like, um, the, the the trickster or the chaos energy that, like, is a, is a whole other side to it, too, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. uh Where... And I think, you know, one time uh, from from all the psychedelic literature, there was this Tibetan monk and he was telling Alan, I think it was at the Alan Ginsberg's um, Jack Kerouac's Disembodied Poetic School. But anyways, he says this lecture and, and something about like a lesson that like you could use in psychedelics. And he says, well, but don't cling. And it's like, if you see heaven, don't cling. If you see how, don't cling. And uh, <laughs> and it's it's like it's like as much as you know there's the, the both sides of the coin. That's why I'm always like if someone like overly like romanticizes it and doesn't like bring in about like the fear or the other side of it or the trickster side of it. Um, then it's just like okay, whatever, <laughs> because it, it 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 is um just that like i think too you know from my own experience it's like um even though you have these um personal hand words that that give you um say your relationship to friend uh but it is still like how much like at the end of the day you still process it through your own mind and you can't is like how many minds do i have you know <laughs> and uh like that's that's why I, that's why i kind of like I I really do think uh, Robert Anton Wilson uh, and his work helps uh, with Chapel of Perilous, and it's funny too because you know you know how like um, weird of my my content could be, and I always get like certain um, comments, and this one person said something about oh be careful about pulling the cosmic trigger, <laughs> and then I was like yeah Operation Mindfuck has gone too successful, I got it, <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny because like. And it goes back to that same thing. It's like, like I know perfectly well, like how I'm using it. Like I'm using it as this artistic like project, uh -huh. and and um, meaning I'm not mistaking the map from the or the meal from the menu or the map from the territory 
Or at least I am constantly trying to check myself on that. <laughs> I think that's a. It's just like a you know in um, Inception where you have to where they have that like little um, yeah device uh, and you're like the, you're checking what, what hold them yeah <laughs> what what side of reality you're on. <laughs> I yeah, think, I think it's good measure to do that. <laughs> Indeed. And this goes back because, to uh, like having your own anchors too, because like if you are having to interact with maybe a more complex, um, you know, system, you kind of have to lose like sense of yourself in a way. Like what I was talking about, like tuning myself with, I don't know, the network at large. I had to be more of a sound than a person <laughs> mm. yeah uh but having like anchors and having different things that kind of like you know set you back uh i think you know um i think even too like talk going back to those stone figures like those could also be like anchors to like okay um I, yeah you're you're not lying having i'm looking feet. at my stack of books thinking yeah. that's exactly what they are yeah, anchors back to yeah, cause, you know you can't feel that in a dream world. Yeah, and even at smell that, that like, paper. Even, yeah, even in the dream, sometimes like if you numbers and stuff like that are like blurry, like they don't. Mm -hmm. they're not, right. They're not totally. Um, I'm losing my sight. Yeah. <laughs> not, uh, solid. Oh. Right. I had I had a writing that I did. Yeah, but that could uh, that could be uh, a reason why there were so many of these little, you know, steles, um, you know, statues, yeah. you know, and not just of the mushroom figures because they <clears throat> they obviously evolved, you know, during with the culture for whatever purposes. But even today, when you know you have a um, a Jesus, you know, statue that you're praying to, yeah, you know, that's exactly what it's for. It's 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 for you know you grounding yourself back into reality. And, um you know the things people do when they pray yeah and i think <laughs> i think too you know for for us and uh any other um person out there listening um is is learn because there's another thing they brought up in that book that i was mentioning um high weirdness he was talking about what is also important um with terrence and dennis what they're talking about later um, what Dennis kind of brings out too is metabolism. I mean, you're talking uh, one good and bad thing that Terrence liked about uh, the mushroom. Like, you know how long, like, the metabolism is going to last. And mm -hmm. it's not always um, true, but, like, you do know, like, okay, I remember I, every time it gets too uh, weird for me, I go, I know I'm on, I'm on shrooms. <laughs> hours, it would all be over <laughs> like it's okay <laughs> just, just go with it whatever happens you'll be fine <laughs> you'll be fine you'll be fine in, in a couple hours and but what what is also interesting when we're talking about like true hallucinations and what is really going on here is i remember one time i it was one of the lowest doses i took like i took it i split an ace with my friend and we were on mm -hmm. the beach but, like, it was, you know, we were, like, I guess really vibing because, like, it was hitting us pretty good. And, like, we had to share mind space. And, like, like it was crazy. And, um, but in the morning, like, I felt like I was, we were totally done with the trip. Like, it was more than six hours later. It was, like, ten uh -huh. hours later. Um, I, I felt, I totally felt, like. You know, like the the weird little psychedelic hangover that you have. You're, you know, it's like yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you st you know, you're not, uh, but you're not yeah. tripping anymore. You're not seeing anything. Right. You're not hearing anything. You're just kind of out of it a little bit. <laughs> yeah. You're just kind of floating a little bit. Um, and then uh, so I just have like this intuitive sense to go back to where we were at the beach, and then there's like this fog, and my friend follows me. And then I then I see like this thing like glowing off of the the ocean, and I and like at this point I'm like walking like kind of automatically now, and my friend's getting kind of nervous. <laughs> like where are you going? And I'm like I don't know. I want to see what's over there. 
<laughs> and I go over there, and I, I, it was like three orbs floating on top of the water, like, and these are like self, like liquid orbs that are like moving in a weird motion. So you, they were pretty close. Oh yeah, it was. I was getting really close to it, uh, and where I could see it, like a like a liquid. Okay, so this wasn't just some lights off in the distance no, in the sky. No, I could see details on this, and then my friend starts freaking out. Did and he see that? Yeah, she saw it. She saw okay. what I was seeing, and she was telling me, don't get any closer, and that we got to <laughs> leave. And so I was okay. like, oh, okay. So I was like, so you, I was pretty plasma. sure. Plasma. Yeah, like plasma. Plasma orbs. orbs uh, a color. Floating. Yeah. And so I'm like. Dude, I'm not tripping. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm not tripping. But at the same time, he's like, that's the only time I've seen something like that. That's the only time I had that, like, that, that feeling. And it was just kind of weird. Because like later, I see this it get expressed in like um, sci-fi films and, uh-huh. and different things. And I'm like, oh, that's exactly what I saw, you know? <laughs> Now you said three of them. Yeah, there was three. Were they were they um, moving erratically or were they? No, um, they were like just hovering, um, in like line. Were they, were they um in a line, just three yeah. in a straight line? Yeah. So they weren't in like a triangular pattern. No, they were just they were just like lying and chilling there. So and uh, you say about how far away? Um, uh, probably like. Four, I would say like four hundred yards. You know, like half a football field, kind of. Over the ocean. Yeah, it was. It was on the coast on um in uh, Newport Beach. Pacific. Yeah. Yeah, that was like uh... details. Um no um so according to ancient um uh, psychedelia, you saw the mushroom and um, beings terraforming the planet. Congratulations, my yeah. man. <laughs> You 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 first hand witness. (laughs) And and the the thing the thing was it was it was crazy because like I felt like I I would we didn't take that much, you know, like in my and I wasn't that experienced then, but it was just like weird that it happened the way it happened. Like on a side note, uh scientifically, speaking of not taking that much, um as far as I forget exactly, I think it was this year. I think it was January of this year. I, don't, I might have the uh, dates wrong, um, but there's a article in the PDF um, about psilocybin um, and its effects on the serotonin two A receptors. Mm-hmm. And apparently, what they found in this study was that what we consider a microdose mm-hmm. may be too much. Now you might have to lower your your idea of what a microdose actually is. Yeah. Would, um. So and that obviously that's gonna go that's gonna be um you know strain specific and whatever. But um, I think too what that. what what is also you know part of the equation was like you know our intention and and our setting we yeah. we were both yeah. already like experienced mushroom people. We already had like the music set. We were already, you know, we already had like a base level of like where we wanted to go. Right. And we kind of like ran, you know, we're like, okay, we're not going to like, we're not going to be stuck on like, oh, can you hear me in your head? We're like, okay, we established contact <laughs> that we're seeing the same thing. Like, let's, let's like change the, the, the landscape, you know? <laughs> we're, we're right, like, right, right. Let's, let's see where we can take see, this. Let's see where we can take yeah. this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I was just saying that uh you guys, you know, you said you didn't think you took that much. Well, maybe you, you know, we what we think is not that much is actually enough yeah. to get us yeah. to get that to get that, you know, where establish that, you know. Uh, And again, that's going to be strain specific yeah. and all of that stuff, yeah. but you probably had a, you know, a good strain that yeah. was high in potency, right? And then you took what you would consider not a lot, but it turned out to be yeah, even though because of, you know, and it has to do with um, the actual, and this is interesting. I think it's it's a uh, it says plasma here, but it's what they were calling psilocybin plasma, okay. which to me is very interesting uh, term. That I want, yeah, it says uh, and plasma psilocin, plasma psilocin. That's what it was. So that's something I definitely want to uh, investigate a lot further to you know for specifically um, you know the. Uh, 
the symbiotic relationship because it, it, it's, it's got to, it, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be on that chemical molecular level. Right. And I think point. too, when we, when we're talking about the, the physics of it, I think a lot of what, what is tied to the poetics of it is the same thing in meaning mm-hmm. if we're talking about plasma, that's an in between state of being liquid and solid. Right. So it's basically, you know, when we're talking about the quantum level of particle or wave, we're talking more of the wave function. So it's not going to be so solid, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <coughs> now, yeah, now, 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 now. Was there more to that? Was there more to that no, story? No. All, <laughs> the now, UFOs. No. All, all I'm thinking about is the the... The plasma liquid <laughs> orb. <laughs> now, just thinking about well, this, this, I, I, listen, that's again si- ancient psychedelia solved this issue yeah. uh, about. I think it was episode twelve of, on his uh, on his podcast. Uh, I forget his name, but uh, okay, yeah, no, that yeah, yeah, that, that I watched all you know fifteen episodes. They're all less than ten minutes. And, yeah, you know, like cool. I said, right up until he started you know talking about UFOs, it, it was all you know. That's where I'm I'm having a little bit of a disconnect. I mean. I've seen lights in the sky that I can't necessarily explain, mm-hmm. but I do explain them. Um, yours, I'm going to leave him to it because I got nothing for that. <laughs> <laughs> but as far as mine were concerned, um, I'll briefly go into it. Okay, this was, yeah. God, this was back. This was back in 2008, summer of 2008. Um, me and a couple of friends and family members, we were all hanging outside. I was smoking. Some of them were smoking. Some of them were drinking and smoking. Um, but that ne- necessarily didn't, you know, ha- have to play in any of this as far as I'm concerned. Um, there was no psychedelics involved, nothing. This was years and years before any of that. Um, but I was taking an astronomy class that summer. And so I was infatuated with the stars, the planets that stuff so as i'm out there smoking i'm not paying attention to whatever anybody else is talking about i'm staring up at the sky i'm just because we lived out um in the country at the time so we had a beautiful uh you know view of the night sky so we were just hanging out there it's like 10 o'clock at night i want to say so summertime probably around june july and i'm looking up into the stars and one star catches my eye and i say star because that's what it looked like it looked exactly like all the other stars in the sky as i'm watching this it's slowly moving the first thought in my mind is uh, it's probably a planet so now i'm you know i'm trying to check that off the list well it didn't cover any of the checks to be a planet other than in motion I'm like that's odd and then as i'm you know trying to figure out what this thing is a second one catches my eye directly underneath it. So now I'm kind of like, what the hell? It's directly underneath it and they're moving together. Both of them look exactly like the background stars. No different, okay? Now at this point, I'm kind of freaking out and I get, I believe my brother's attention and his friend. And we, you know, and I'm like, you gotta see this, check this out. And I'm trying to point it out to them and they end up seeing it. Now. As they're spotting it, a third one, a, it, a, 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 I wouldn't say appears because it, it had to have been there, but it catches our eye. And now there's three stars that we can see moving in tandem together in a eagle lateral triangle shape. So one star was out front and then the two that we saw were, you know, top and bottom. Mm-hmm. Back of the triangle. And at this point, we're, we don't know what the hell to think. We're freaking out. <laughs> You know, we're, we're aliens, you know, what What the hell, what the hell, what the hell. Mm-hmm. We watched this thing a few minutes. It wasn't that long. And then what it appeared to us to do was the, 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 the leading light, the first starlight UFO, it disappeared, but it looked like it went behind something. It didn't just like shut off. It kind of like faded from front to back like it went behind something and then the next two proceeded to do the same thing like they went into something 
that's that's what <laughs> this is what we're freaking out we're like oh shit 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 so i immediately run into you know the house i grab my astronomy book look and I, I flip to the star chart and i map out what we just saw mm -hmm. and then i started to investigate what the hell i just saw <laughs> What would what did we see? The closest thing that I saw that sufficed, you know, to my scientific curiosity, not necessarily my uh, conspiracy theorist <laughs> mind, mm -hmm. but scientifically, the closest thing that I found again, this was in the summer of 2008. The closest thing I saw was an article that said NASA or whoever the government, NASA most likely, was planning on sending up satellites in 2012 mm. to measure the end of um no, reality. It was, no, <laughs> it, was, uh, it was a specific particle they're looking for um okay. it's like back it's not background cosmic radiation but it's <clears throat> i think it's a specific particle that they were looking for yeah. it was or one of the two but right. the the like the, gamma, the idea was radiation yeah, yeah, it was something. Yeah, it was something real sensitive. But the idea was they were going to send these satellites up there, um, and the article that I found showed an image, um, of obviously like. CGI of what it would look like, um, of an equilateral triangular shape that these um, satellites were going to be in. But they were going to be connected by an infrared laser, so you wouldn't have been able to see that. But they would have been. It's they would have been, uh, you know, locked in position, moving in tandem together. Yeah. Now, again, 2008, the article said 2012. Uh, my dad was in the Navy for four years. He told me stories. The, the government's got technology uh -huh. at least 30 years minimum in advance from what they tell the public about. Yeah. Okay. So to me, it made perfect sense that they already launched this thing and they're already testing it. And they're not just testing it in equilateral triangles, but they're testing it in all types of shapes, all types of sizes, all types of whatever. Yeah. That's what, that's what they're going to do. Um, so that's what I end up chalking my experience in, up to, because again, that's what it appeared to me. It wasn't, again, it was so far away that I, it was just little dots that look like stars. So I couldn't conclusively say that if it was a craft, it was plasma, if it was this, if it was that, there was no way of knowing any of that. But the description of what I believe I saw meets the description of what the, you know, program that NASA was supposed to be sending up. <clears throat> Just, you know, the slight, slight. But yeah, so, and then there was another experience on the beach, but that, that wasn't really anything. I, I can chalk that up to lights. Um, they look like, um, you know, the searchlights mm -hmm. look like a few searchlights. Somebody was having a party on a yacht, probably. And we it was just <laughs> over the horizon, but we could see the lights. That was <laughs> either that or there were UFOs, but it was just, you know, it looked like it looked like a bunch of searchlights out there. So. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but yeah, I'm not I'm not too big on the UFO theory as in that, but very compelling that you've seen some uh, glowing orbs. Now I do have a I do have an idea. I wouldn't even call it a theory. Um, and it goes it goes back into the guy in hypothesis, I oh. guess you could say. Um, but I think that is too broad. Mm -hmm. Right? I think I, I think that leaves out the individual organisms of this planet that compose of the overall um i guess intelligence of the planet mm -hmm. um and specifically for crop circles it's not aliens it's actually the plants that are doing it mm -hmm. because they're trying to communicate with us that's my personal opinion from my my deep dives into crop circles okay um and they tend to produce plasma orbs um now the question would be what's under the water right um out there that would be what the ancient alien people would question is there spaces under the water are there bases underwater is there a habitat under the water as in an ecological you know system of coral reef or you know other marine life that we don't necessarily understand 100 percent about that's down there that could be doing these things <clears throat> there's a lot of other you know answers than just aliens so. yeah. <laughs> 
they, they speaking of they le re recently just found uh the microorganisms living off of that plastic out there yeah so it who knows what it is it, it, it's probably not going to be aliens life finds but, a way right but it's going to be some other life that we do share you know this this habitat with yeah i i think too it for me it's like um the the complexity and the denseness of the actual informational environment that we live in there's a lot more going on than um we we commonly realize you know oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and we tend to you know we we make believe yeah and uh uh definitely you know like um some of the the interesting things uh that that um i kind of wanted to play with too in dude where's my wallet was like you know um like dolphins <laughs> mm -hmm. and there was this article recently about orcas like um tipping over boats and then yeah and then they found out like the one that was teaching the other ones how to tip over the boat they had a bad experience with a boat yep <laughs> so you know like there's I'm, a, there's I'm surprised a whole... it took them so long yeah like the, there's um you know there's a lot of, of things going yeah. on oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. what we realize um and even too like i read this article about uh, there's this one i think it was a orangutan like the the science said that they saw it um like kill itself with like some kind of kill itself yeah. yeah and it's like oh they've been yep. doing that forever like we just like getting hip to just not noticing <laughs> yeah. It. oh yeah i mean this is this is definitely um most likely the case like social media definitely amplifies a lot of these things like i remember um just a few days ago seeing a story about i believe it was an orca okay back in i believe the 1800s oh, uh -huh. it was something like that it might have been a doll it was it was so it was one of those one of those creatures um and it linked up with the fishermen oh, wow. and it would point the fishermen to i believe tuna i think that's what they were hunting oh. I can't remember the details. I might be I might be a hundred percent wrong on all of this, but <laughs> the fact of the matter is, it was this might have been this might have been a TikTok made up shit. I don't know. AI AI made made this story up. <laughs> it sounded great though. Um, I oh, God, it. fact check me, Jesus. <laughs> you know, this day and age, we got to fact check everything. But anyways, the story goes, whether or not it's real. <laughs> uh, and I'm gonna I'm gonna call it an orca, and I'm gonna say they teamed up with local fishermen to hunt tuna. That's what I'm remembering at the moment, oh, whether yeah. or not that's true. And uh, I don't think that's true. That doesn't sound right in my mind now that I'm trying to. But anyways, it might have been bigger. It might have been bigger than tuna. It might have been whales they were hunting because they were, I believe, hunting for whales. I don't remember. I'm going to look it up. But anyways, they, they, were, they were linking up with another, uh, another sea creature to hunt another sea creature, <laughs> these fishermen. <laughs> And uh, yeah, and they, they would go out to sea and they would see the, uh, I believe it was the orcas and the orcas would take them to their catch and they would share the spoils of the catch. Yeah. yeah great, great story. <laughs> That's exactly how we domesticated wolves, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's just, yeah, that's human history, right? That's, um, <laughs> no, but the, we, I mean, the, these, uh, and we used to know it, it just, we got so far away from. You know. It's the yeah, it's it's the modern you know cities that really detach us from you know, yeah. nature, nature and uh, all its um weirdness. And I think that's oh the, to to round everything back around when I was mentioning about like there's a difference between high strangeness and high weirdness. Like high weirdness is like more connected to like the organic uh, weirdness that that's out there and then i think high strangeness is like um you know the the things that we experience um by like the over culture or or this um man-made stuff you know broadly what i poetically describe as the black iron prison is like the the stuff that kind of like detaches us from like um the i remember one time and i even i didn't even like the stream because it was kind of funny because it's 
said it, uh, it it gave me this word of about holy eyes and it's kind of like the blinking thing like if it if the doors of perceptions were cleansed you see everything truly as it is <laughs> and uh but yeah and i i think the high strangeness is it's kind of like the the difference to the what i was talking about in the beginning and between like the the drama and wildness that like comes with like drinking and real drugs versus like the the high weirdness that comes from like psychedelics and um and mm. even even weed in that sense <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> but kids out there you know go out there take a lot of mushrooms and really start to destroy your the sense of yourself man <laughs> that's, that's that's an interesting concept back on the kids because uh, you know a lot of people like I've, i i started psychedelics at 25 okay. but uh, unless you count weed if you count weed it was 16 so but weed was the only thing that i ever really did i didn't get into mushrooms and i tried a little bit of lsd but that's that's literally all i've done but till 25 and I, that wasn't intentionally. That wasn't something that I chose to do. It was just they were never around yeah. until they were around. Uh, one, one day my friend came and he had a big jar. Oh, okay. So I'm like, yeah, let's, let's do this thing. But, um, but I, I, I believe it's the Mets. It might be others. Who knows? But I believe they say 25, right, is when the brain is fully mature yeah. and they're like, yeah. try to stay away until that point. Um, I, I'm not sure how scientifically um, accurate that statement is, or who even yeah. said that. You know, um, I do think, as far as like we're we're living in the time that we are in in the culture that we are, I do think later, um, it like what you're saying about like 25, maybe even you know, somewhere around like um well uh, kids i think they have too much life baggage that they need to technically you know handle yeah. right and that's why a lot of people get turned off with their first time because they have a bad trip oh yeah and the bad the bad trip is usually something that they don't want to speak about and it's usually something personal it's something that they're not ready to handle and yeah. they're still wanting to package it away so it's usually a bad trip and that sends them down the spiral um at least you know that's not all bad trips but usually that's what it seems like to me that that's you know so kids not having that necessarily maturity to handle you know just life in general and in the real world you think they're going to be ready to handle what you know the psychedelic experience is throwing at them i'm not sure you know i mean i wasn't a kid doing these things so i can't i can't speak on that right yeah um so but i know you know other people that you know usually they start you know 13 16 you know they're in they're in high school and you know and that's a flip of the coin whether or not the story comes out to be you know a good trip or bad trip right well you know so. kind of going back to my family like that's the reason why one of my uncles thinks i'm crazy because he took like lsd when he was like 13 on, mm -hmm. a, on a bus and i'm just like what that's not that's not the way you use it <laughs> yeah well that's that's, <laughs> that's 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 immaturity, right? The yeah. ignorance, and not knowing what you're going getting into. Uh, but you know, you live and you learn in certain circumstances, right? Yeah, but like that was like his only like context to like as I go like, oh, now. But also, then you know, not necessarily every 13 year old has some life trauma, right? Oh. And they don't, you know, their their closest thing to you know alternate reality would be but, some science know, fiction if, right if we are going you know digging back into the past to try to glean some information about you know um the relationship that gets developed because you know it's already taught us some of these lessons that i i believe like you know um the coming of age ritual was also mm. to the initiation mm. and um so you know broadly speaking indigenous cultures you know mm. uh, around like 13 14 when they become yeah. a proper member of the tribe they go on a vision quest and you know the hallucinogenic tribes it would be peyote or whatever right 
and they had to go out and uh, survive on their own, basically. Like, okay, throw them in the deep end. But this is, this is prior true. to that, they were kind of having lessons and, and myths well, and, and, and stuff leading up to this, and they already knew prior from other family members or whatever, kind of broadly what what is expected and, and how to to get yourself ready for it. So, you know, mm-hmm. I think, too, when we're talking about now, it, it does seem like when we're talking about when is the proper way to kind of, like, handle something this this heavy, once again, I think, like, in, in our culture, we start to become, or we should start to become fully uh, adults is more around this, this 20 age, right? Uh, before mm-hmm. that, yeah, like, what you were saying, like, I, I, I didn't do. I I started to experiment with um, with weed and and psychedelics. I I think a little later too. Like I didn't experiment. Like I didn't start using them in high school. It was in college, and I kind of was like taking my time and like reading about right. it. And then I kind of like worked up the courage to to do it. And I think I just like put my toe in, and then like later I tried it again. Um, and so. I think the first time was around 18, 19, but I said, I I don't think I really figured, figured it out until like, like my summer of 23, (laughs) Mm. (laughs) my second, my first psychedelic summer. And I was reading, uh, the luminous, luminous trilogy (laughs) and cosmic trigger. And I was thinking, is Robert Anton Wilson watching me right now? (laughs) (laughs) Because when you were talking about the stars, and I was like, don't tell me this was the star series. I'm going to start losing my shit if you told me that. No, I, I, I couldn't tell you at this point. If I, flipped, if I still had the book, I'd, I'd, I could pull up a star chart. I'd probably tell you. It probably it was, is. Probably is. Uh, I'd, I'd have to think star. about it too hard. It was, it was probably facing north. You're not lying. <laughs> <laughs> it was directly overhead. I know that. Yeah. Oh great! You know, just getting getting in tune with the galactic um system, <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's kind of like and and I think to another frame that I like, and that will bring into more um psychedelics as super placebos. And I, I think I think too like consciousness works as like a super placebo, you, you know, kind of like so, so you say that one more time. Super placebo. Yes, what the whole thing psychedelics as a super placebo yeah and even wouldn't that be an exception as super placebo but yeah consciousness i mean like psychedelics as a super placebo meaning like even the studies of like this is like um analyzing the the psychedelic like uh studies meaning when people back in the day were like studying it as an anti like a like a a, uh, like a um a psychotic like they they thought oh we're gonna test it on prison uh people and or test it in this clinical setting to like create psychosis like their results were that versus like people that were saying oh let's um like there's this study where they wanted it to be like um like creative meaning like someone had a technical um problem that they couldn't solve for like seven months and then they take this therapy and then they come up with their like a, a real answer to a technical problem that had to be like math or science. And then they, they came to the solution for it during their, uh, and then the, their accuracy of the test was like, at like 85% or whatever that people were getting the right answer. Um, but like, or if they were set up to be like, Oh, we're going to, uh, take care of someone's PSD or, or you know, P P T S D, you know, or they're doing it for like terminally ill people or even back in then they were doing it for alcoholics anonymous. They were the, the, the way they got to AA was the guy took LSD. It's kind of funny that they don't, they don't use that <laughs> to help uh, uh, anything, uh, but, yeah. Anything but the cure, right? Yeah, the the original cure that got him to the to the answer, as like it's a lot easier when you you kind of have the direct experience versus like someone mediating it for you. You know, mm-hmm. I think that 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 becomes like a, a thread throughout all of this, right? Right. Yeah. 
So yeah, I mean, it's yeah, I mean, it's a it's a step in the right direction. Ultimately, you know, we're, they, they are we're gonna have to go down that route, right? Yeah. Well, you know, uh, white walls <laughs> route to get ultimately to where you know it's beneficial for everybody. Yeah. Um, and I and I think too, you know, like the area I think we we, we are trekking is is in this like gray area uh you know because i think too keeping and 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 we don't have to do this it'll, it'll do it itself but honoring the weird that is really in um psilocybin and and other um natural mm-hmm. uh, psychedelics um and you know i i, I don't uh, i do think you know the first step is what we were talking about earlier is kind of like dealing with your own stuff in order and not it's not for everybody but um there there should always be a place for um this this other the you know the deeper um stuff that can't be truncated into like some type of therapy or Mm -hmm. some type of like end product that you get out of it you know what i mean Yeah. yeah i mean it is it's definitely good for that like we don't want to, you know, brush any yeah. of that off because some people, you know, can't just deal with their baggage on their own. Yeah. So it's gonna be it's gonna be there as that tool, right? As yeah. as as the medicine it needs to be. Um. But it is you know, like it, it, there is a whole nother side, right? Yeah. There's multiple sides. It's it's not just you know, dual sided. There's this thing is it has many sides, it's many yeah. faces to it. So. Um, it's definitely has its practical uses for healing. Um, and we, we can't, you know, put restrictions on that. That's, that needs to be wide open, Yeah, you know, and that needs to be tested and, you know, all those great things to, you know, figure out exactly, you know, what it's doing and, you know, why is it doing? does well, because it's definitely it definitely works we know that there's no yeah. argument against it actually working so yeah, the, the proof <laughs> is in actually t- right yeah it's, <laughs> it's it's there you know it's there but also too, have I, to I have think that courage what, what what was in one of the things that paul was saying was um like there's also practical use of like using the psilocybin along with i think he was saying lion's made and some other mm-hmm. chemical as like this vitamin for your mind <laughs> like 12 like uh, niacin niacin. Yeah. niacin there you go Stamus stack yeah and it kind of yeah. like what what he was saying is you know which i was kind of thinking about too when i was talking about my moses thing it's like you know cleansing the old um microtubules <laughs> mm. <laughs> to make sure the the old the, the old um consciousness tuner brain is working properly you know yeah <clears throat> yeah he's doing a lot of uh trials on that so it's looks good I, I don't know if he's gonna have a product out soon but yeah those three the lion's mane psilocybin and niacin apparently um not individually but only together sure. work in the entourage effect to actually boost mental capabilities so yeah it's very interesting yeah let's see like that that kind of stuff is i mean especially like it's so funny too because when I was reading these different things that I was telling you this article about like um the Mayans um uh, using the, that broken mirror and then like there's another yeah. one where they were um evidence of them doing a ritual with um like you know blessing or doing um the ball court and they and they had a um, morning glory which is a psychedelic um mm-hmm. I've done I've done morning glory. Uh, I still have morning glories growing in my backyard from when I, nice. when I did that back in the day. <laughs> um, but it, it's kind of funny because then also too, part of um, the stuff that I was reading, um, there was this this thing about AI and um, what's it called? Altman was saying like, uh, San Altman, I think his name is, uh, OpenAI. He said, I don't care uh-huh. if we, we spend $50 billion trying to create um what they call it a gi um artificial general intelligence uh-huh. and then uh he's like oh, this is going to create more of this and that and i was just like thinking like 
Is there already a way to like engage with a higher intelligence? All right. <laughs> and and the thing too is because you know I think uh, some of that uh, large language models are interesting and especially when you're dealing with like the remix ability of letting letting the language model be weird is um fun and interesting but at the same time it's too is like you know when you were talking about making contact uh with with the friend and uh this is part of like you know testing it your own self like an entity that mm-hmm. has its own intelligence doesn't do what you want it to do <laughs> right just like what i don't know yeah <laughs> like, that's, 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 that's like that's like the point of like intelligence like that was like my joke in the paper bums is like the the ai the the algorithm finally tells you no i'm not gonna do that i'm gonna do this it's <laughs> <laughs> doing its own thing yeah. <laughs> i mean it's just as, as far as the uh the, the current algorithms we have i don't know if i would call them artificial intelligence yeah. by any means that's why i mean there are they're playing, some out there that's why they're playing games with with a language right they're calling it ai but it's really large language models and then, yeah it's sophisticated google searches yeah <laughs> ask me anything mm-hmm. i can only tell you what the internet gives me thank yeah. you for <laughs> uh, thank you for that response i love that response <laughs> <laughs> but no the, the best response i get from it is um like, cause you, you know, you, you ask it to, you know, speculate on certain things, if certain things were certain things and it goes, oh, you know, there's no evidence for that. I'm like, that's what I'm asking for. <laughs> I'm asking for you to you do to my speculate. research for me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, like the thing too, is like this, this becomes the chicken and the egg or like what, what, what we're chasing our own tail. Maybe in some sense it's like, uh, you know the those um alum uh the large language models are only as good as like what you put into it you know and in yeah. in a lot of ways sometimes the more information you get is is like how much you already have put into your mind beforehand you know like we're talking about like taking care of your own baggage but also to finding um uh, concepts and and language that helps you be like oh i think terence is talking about this Oh, I think mm. Robert Anton Wilson's talking about this, or you know, whatever. Um, that's why I like those guys because there's stuff that I read from them that I use. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know. Sure. Uh, uh, so, but also two things too. I think what we're getting to is like modifying them and um, turning them into our own hand words. And I think that's a lot of like the power of of like doing the process, the work is is to have like mm. those those um what was um eric davis who writes uh, high weirdness he was talking about technologies of the self and like these these um things that artists and mystics and and shamans have left through different texts are are encoded with like their own techniques of what they develop um technologies of their self to get mm into higher states of or deeper uh states of um consciousness of in tune with the mycelial network the dream time or or whatever um Mm -hmm. you know you want to put over it whatever like software that gets put over it um which is whatever app you open up yeah and i think that's what, (laughs) what, what what you know using these the the updated terms it helps you think about it like oh yeah it, it brings actually, it a little bit more down to earth. Yeah. Just a little bit. That, like, we're creating poetic apps for us to be able to maybe uh, glean more of the information. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a good place to end. We're in around two hours. Yeah. So we'll pick up uh, starting, I guess, off with uh, Allegro and that discussion next yeah. time. Yeah. Beautiful. Cause uh, you know, we, we touched on a few of the concepts that, you know, goes into that conversation, um, religion and that 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 stuff. So yeah. we can definitely take a deep dive. Um, because um I think uh you, you had you had three names, McKenna, Anton, and um 
Wilson and um, what was the third name that you John uh, C. Lilly. Lilly. Um, I think Allegro should uh, definitely be in there for a fourth as, okay. you know, yeah. key to all of this because as far as I'm concerned, um, he's still ostracized for this idea. Um, and because he had this idea, his career essentially, I wouldn't say was ruined, um, but as it has a, you know, it has an asterisk on it. Right. Um, but if you were going into that same career to do any of, you know, that same um, ancient, um, you know, language studies and all of that, you would have to use, specifically for the Dead Sea Scrolls, you would have to use his translations to this day to actually, you know, research those those things. So to me, that's 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 very contradictory that how you can ostracize somebody, but yet still have to use his work and say that he didn't know what he was talking about. So it's it's stuff that, you know, we definitely got to get into. So um, and I, like I said, I think he um, he's definitely key, at least his idea, maybe not everything, but this specific idea um, that it's, you know, it's all it's all mushroom mythology. Um, so, yeah. OK, yeah. Get the- into it. Yeah. Yeah, and then um what do you call it? I think too what I want to bring in is like that um maybe we do it the third time the 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 little mushroom people <laughs> get in get into um what crazy shit um some of the indigenous people were doing with the mushrooms. Yep. Yeah, I mean, it, it all ties in. It, they're, they're parallel. So, yeah, the, the, the that, names are almost the same, identical, if not yeah, the same. Yeah. The, yeah. The and little, there was this thing little too children of the woods. I, I really I have this um, this thing about, like, um, I think it's a, a Mesotech, uh ritual, and it's, a, it's also about, like, the music that gets played with it, um, which which I think it would be interesting to kind of, like, bring about because – I think it's pretty much like standard uh, something about like um you know some type of rhythm to like a, it's kind of like a metronome to get you into <laughs> in sync <laughs> and it's definitely something to do with that weird buzzing sound <laughs> yeah but yeah anyways it was good good stuff all right yes sir good talk okay later on till next time Sucks, 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 suc